So just a, a very practical question. If I called you and said, Paul, I'm starting a shipping company and I have no idea what fuel I should use. You have ammonia, you have LNG, you have hydrogen, heavy fuel, and you have all the options available. What would you tell me? What do you think is the perfect fuel to decarbonize shipping? Because that seems like a very hard challenge at the moment. And it doesn't seem like anyone has a perfect answer yet, but do you have an idea on that at all? So my answer to that question is really simple. It's that, uh, you know, I would say, call me back in 2040 because I have no idea what's going to decarbonize shipping. Let me explain to you why, because I'm not just a technical person. I understand business and the business of shipping is number one, it's very international. They use flags of convenience to avoid regulation. Okay. And the cost per ton mile of, of freight on the ocean is 40 to 60% fuel cost, even using fossils. And everything that you can substitute for fossils is going to be more expensive and not just by a little, by a lot. Okay. So it doesn't matter what you pick, whether you pick ammonia, methanol, biofuels, you know, you're not, it's not going to be hydrogen. It's not going to be batteries on the, on the transoceanic shipping for coastal ships. You're going to use batteries, you know, uh, uh, inland waterways, uh, canals, uh, ferries, you're going to use batteries because they're cheaper. There's no question, but for um, transoceanic shipping, the answer is there's lots of options, biofuels, methanol, ammonia, all of them suck. All of them are expensive. All of them have infrastructure costs associated with them. All of them are going to drive up the cost of shipping per ton mile enormously. And so guess what? If you're the shipping industry, you're going to use fossils and you're going to make lots of noise about one day in the future decarbonizing. And guess when you're going to decarbonize? When the government forces you to decarbonize and not a minute sooner. So Maersk, what did they do? They spent some money on future proofing some expensive assets. You know, they bought some ships and they made sure that they can fuel them with this or that, right? But they're going to run them on fossils until the government forces them to use something else, for sure, because that's the economic imperative for them. But I mean, that's the best answer because I also need to improve my cash flow in order to buy a ship. So if I can call you in, in the future, maybe that's the well, best well, way. Well, you know, you know my name. My name is Paul Martin. And Paul Martin is a famous guy in Canada because he was part of the largest leveraged buyout in Canadian history. He bought Canadian steamship lines, okay? And then he became prime minister later. But anyway, uh, I always tell people when people say, hey, are you the Paul Martin? I say, yeah, but if I had his money, I would burn my own because I'd have plenty, right? I'd settle for only just one of those steamships that Paul Martin got. Uh, you know, but anyway, they, the, that's the, uh, the issue I'd, I'd love to, uh, I'd love to have, uh, the real Paul Martin's money, but unfortunately I just have his name. 